Hey, Or. Hey, Jan. How are you doing, man? Doing good. How are you? Pretty good. So, what are we going to do today? So, I thought we could have another bass lesson on the keyboards today. That's an awesome idea. It's been a while since our last one, so I think uh, it's just about time. Yeah. Um, how do you want to start? So, you know, we've been working really hard together to do this uh, bass fingers plugin. Right. And it's cool. It's been a lot of fun to do it. Uh, but now that it's done and it's out, uh, I want to know more about how to play more how like to, you. Yeah, how to actually play bass. Yeah. Uh, Right, that's cool. Um, we can start off by something simple and then make it more complex as we go along, uh, like everything we do. Um, mm -hmm. So I think you're already set up to play something like this. So Pretty simple. Yeah, it took me way longer to figure this out, so uh, way to go. Um, one of the more important elements in uh, playing bass is actually choosing the right location to play uh, the same pitch because uh, let's take this E for example, we can play it uh, at exactly the same pitch but in different positions and different locations on the fretboard. Huh. And uh, as you can hear, I'll play it again, um, it's exactly the same but it the voice kind of changes and becomes more rich in the low end and low mids and less kind of punchy and uh, and trebly. Right? Yeah, you, you know, that's interesting, because as a, as a keyboard player, I'm not used to that at all. Like, right. I have the one E that's here, or the one yeah. E that's here, and that's it. Yeah, the, um, that's part of the problem uh, sight reading on these instruments, is you got to think ahead, because the same pitch is located in different places. Huh. Um, but that also uh, helps us kind of create a lot of variety in the tone. Um, so how about we take that same phrase and move it around on the fretboard uh, with the position selector. All right. So play the same thing, but move to a position five. It should sound something like this. Awesome. So I did map, uh, map this to the, to the different keys. So I got right. position zero here, which we started with, and I got position five here. So that would be zero. Yeah. That would be five, right? So exactly. So the 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 first one was, and this one is. Exactly. Nice. Yeah, that makes a huge difference when you're in a band context. Uh, sometimes when you work let's say when you accompany certain styles uh, or if there's a prominent singer you want to avoid uh, the open strings and all the positions that kind of give give out a more trebly high midi tone and compete for that range right um, so if you if you want to go even a bit darker you can play the same phrase and move to position 10 uh, so yeah but as you can see right now you're playing on the same string because you didn't unlock the B string so you can go to the string range and kind of move the slider to also include the the B string, and then you'll have you you'll be able to play something like this. Right. It's so dark. Yeah, but check out something cool, right? I noticed that we unlocked the B string, so you're also getting the closed E. Uh, but you can actually activate open strings and then get exactly what I'm playing, right? So now the E string will always remain open. Yeah, so now try playing. Right. So I'm getting the darker tone, the darker tone, but I'm yeah. still getting this. This bright, big. Yeah, usually when an open string is like the root note of a chord or a song, uh, it's really nice to kind of land on the one with, a, you know, a big bright tone and then have maybe the rest of the notes uh, be darker. And also that's part of the advantage of moving along the fretboard. Uh, sometimes in the same song you'll play all over the place just to have like the right note in the right position for for a part you know that's cool I'm, I'm so not used to this as a keyboard player i just yeah. like to think of the one note that i have right, to play and right. that's it or maybe i'll change the patch but i'll never go to you know the same or to, to a different note on the instrument where i'm actually playing the same yeah because you, you, you basically have one position for each uh, pitch but right. uh yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting difference, I think, um, between the instruments. And I think it's also like, in terms of tone, it's the best EQ ever. Right. Like instead of changing knobs or anything, uh, just researching like positions for notes and seeing the difference in the mix, 
Uh, it's just something I think every bass player should have like as a first tool in his you know toolbox. Totally. Yeah. But also it's harder to learn, right? Because yeah, uh, <laughs> you got to learn all the positions. Yeah. At first, like you start by doing dividing it into boxes, uh, in kind of the same way that uh, the plugin operates in a way, uh, and that creates a lot of order. But then you start to think of the instrument in a more complete way, and then you know you progress from there. Awesome. Um, so this is cool, yeah. but. You know, uh, in a lot of tracks that I produce, uh, one of the things that I want to do is play in a bit more, you know, rock style, yeah. something rocking that's driving with the band. Yeah. That's something that's a bit hard to do for me as a keyboard player. I think I played some of these tracks, so right. I know what you mean. Um, cool. So I think, um, like, for me, I mean, I grew up listening to rock and a lot of bass players uh, in rock and metal actually took fingerstyle playing to a more extreme place yeah. and um, got around to kind of spanking the strings harder and creating these crazy attacks. Uh, and we actually have that, but you'll have to do, like, you'll, you'll have to limit your velocity to that range in order to get those attacks. Uh, so if you want to go ahead and change the velocity slider to the last, let's say, four, um, you know. All right. So, so that's interesting, right? I, I, I want to listen to it for a second be, because uh, you're saying basically the velocity is like more of the sound, right? Yeah. So, because like when I'm playing this, like, yeah, that's that's really mellow, right? I have to yeah. kind of, yeah, yeah, I kind exactly. of push, push the instrument forward. Yeah, exactly. So uh, let me bring up the slider. You can actually have it, like, let's say from five to eight, which, would be the range that I would play these tracks that you mentioned. So yeah. I get a lot of like buzz and noise out of the instrument. Yeah, right? but we can do the same thing as before. Uh, if you want to get rid of that and kind of put it in a better context, um, the actual riff you're about to play, uh, I would play on position number five. So. Yeah. But try, you know what? Try not to do it as hard. Try to, uh, right now we have it limited, so you don't have to worry that much about uh, hitting the right, um, let's say, velocity to have it really explosive. Just try to flow with the phrase and hear how it's distributed automatically to your playing, right? right. So I'll just play the riff like this. Right. right? So. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that? Yeah, that's pretty cool because you, you can see right now that, um, let's say, your minimal velocity is, a, is still very punchy and aggressive. And then when your hand naturally kind of hits the keyboard harder, in the same way my hand does, uh, you get that explosive kind of plucking noise. Yeah, and those artifacts come, come with all that, that styling of heavy playing. Pretty cool. So... Yeah. <laughs> One last thing, um, limit the B string again, like uh, uh, avoid the B string again if you want to get it just right. So now you'll get that F sharp in the, on the E string. Yeah. Ah, yeah, that's, that's what I was looking for. Yeah, that's the tone. Exactly. Yeah, that sounds great. Uh, I'm sorry awesome. to say it. it's like it's my samples and it's <laughs> saying it sounds great. I'm just, you know, I'm just excited. Um, all right, so this is cool, but yeah. I'm a keyboard player, and I know this is a bass, mm -hmm. but, you know, we like to play chords. We were kind of bored with just playing single yeah. note all I the like time. I like playing root notes. It's like uh, all that chord stuff is really confusing, oh. minor and major. I like yeah, to play but anything but the root note. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anything that's, but the root that's note. why we work well together. Um, so try and play try and play some chords. Yeah. All right. You can just go ahead and do that, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, so... How about know. you start on the zero position, though? So it's, first of all, really muddy. Yeah. Yeah, you're also not getting all the voices that you're actually playing. So yeah. just to, let's figure out what's going on, all right? right. Um, let's try and play uh, G minor chord, uh, G, D, and um, B flat, but on an octave higher, right? Right. Because so. uh, when playing bass, but... Yeah, exactly. But you can hear it's... 
it's not the most appealing tone to that chord. Yeah. Um, so a cool thing to do would be to have the position slider way up here on fret 15. I think you have that mapped. Yeah. Now try that chord, but shift an octave higher, and you should get something beautiful. Yeah. Oh, but keep in mind, you're on the higher velocity, so you're kind of All right. beating that chord up, which can also work, actually. But yeah, that sounds great. So... Yeah, you're getting fancy now. <laughs> so there's something else, nice about how this is kind of distributed, right? Yeah. There's a nice timber to it, mm -hmm. right? Right, there's something nice about the fact that yeah, you get this correct polyphony here, but then this kind yeah. of limits me, so I got like a legato sample here. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, the plugin. Not that just a plugin, but a bass kind of keeps you in context in that way because the voicings that I, I would use, um, I basically, each string is able to produce a single note. Yeah. So I only have a maximum of, let's say, five notes right. that I can play simultaneously uh, as opposed to a keyboard player who can just like lay down on the, on the keyboard. Um, but that creates kind of very interesting voices and very interesting uh, soprano movements uh, within the chord, like you just did uh, something like... Um, and having that legato on the um, upper voice is something I think fairly unique to playing chords on a bass. You can even research with that. Let's try like a C major on just like the end of the fretboard. You can move to position 20. You have that? Great. So which chord was that? Uh, just a C major with the 1, 5 and the 3rd on the higher up. Yeah. There's something really nice in that area. It's very, it's very delicate and precise. It has like a sweet kind of attack, and then it decays kind of fast because the string is really short up here, you know. Yeah, and you know that's that's interesting because as a keyboard player, I'm not used to getting the legato up there, right? right? But this is like just natural, yeah, uh, something natural that happens on the string because you're limited. You know, like in a, with a keyboard, if I would go here and just add this note, it will actually add to the polyphony. But here. Yeah, exactly. You kind of get the polyphony up there, mm -hmm. right? Like it's it's like it's kind of limiting me, but it uh, it also gives me like some flexibility on being melodic yeah. up there. Well, what's what's really cool about it? Yeah, that's beautiful. What's really cool about it is that these kind of limitations really, even without us knowing, they shape the styling of an uh, a, a player. Let's right. say so, like when the five string bass came along. Uh, you could do more with it, right? But there's still those limitations. So people go on adding uh, strings and you know creating new instruments. But um, there's something about these limitations that kind of spark creativity in a way, you know. So if you're like, let's say you're a keyboard player and you're limited in that sense, it would necessarily make you, you know, play stuff that you wouldn't have otherwise. Yeah. And uh, and these limitations also is, is what makes it be like really contextual as a as a base not just a keyboard instrument, you know? Very cool. Yeah. So what else? Do we have anything uh, or is this enough? Uh, <laughs> I think that's enough for today. For I think today? that's pretty good. Man, yeah, thank you so much. Nice. Man, my pleasure, man. It's, it's great. High five. We did it.